that's what All right. Doing. Let's start off with <coughs> maybe a joke or two. <laughs> All right, here we go. By the way, I'm Daryl. If you don't know me, oh, hi Daryl. Hey, hi. Daryl. Hey, hi. Hi, Daryl. <laughs> you know, thou shalt not weigh more than thy refrigerator. <laughs> Someone who thinks logically provides a nice contrast to the real world. <laughs> is that the truth? It is. If you must choose between two evils. Choose the one that you've never tried before. Yeah. Right? That's, that's, that's my motto there. You gotta try at least once, right? You don't have to do it twice, but you do it yeah. once. Did you do the hawk shop? Yeah. Yeah, I did. You did that. Okay. I just wanted, I wasn't here last week, so. So, struggling with a budget is a new is no new problem. It dates back to the Roman Empire. Latin House, housewives seldom had a regular amount given to them, their husbands each week or a month. Consequently, consequently, they were forced to be very cautious at their spending. They'd lead to the practice of keeping money for household expenses in a leather bag, each holding the sum set aside for a specific amount. This custom also prevailed among businessmen who may have borrowed it from their wives, or vice versa. <laughs> Bulga, which is a Latin word for bag, because attached to a careful planning of one's finances, adopted into the French as bouguet, I think so. You know, it's French, I put 50 different letters, they don't pronounce it. It's even entered in the English as budget. Oh my. I'll go ahead and get a song here in a little bit. A poem is written in the honor of the bride and groom. It's called a... I can't even pronounce that. <laughs> it's, it looks like epitaph or something. Epitaph. 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 Really? Yes. I thought that's what you put in the headstone. Yeah. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, depends on the marriage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a couple of patron saints here. Um, one is George Carlin, and the other is John Lennon. Yay, yeah. George and John. Okay. John. Oh, my goodness, this is longer than I wanted this time. <laughs> we've, got, we've got this gift of love, but love is like a precious plant. You can't just accept it and leave it in the cupboard or just think it's going to uh, get on by itself. you got to keep watering it. You've got to really look after it and nurture it. And then there's good old George. He's my favorite. I've read a lot of his on, the, on uh, Facebook lately. Um, I don't have any pet thieves. I just have major psychotic Hatreds. <laughs> I'm not going to say the word in between. So. <laughs> All right. And things to make you go, hmm. Maybe. Whether learning has made more proud men or good men may be, the quest, may be a question. I can't hold on to this. Who lives without folly is not so wise as he thinks. <laughs> There's no such thing as a great talent without great willpower. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. Cool. <coughs> All right. Hmm. Hey, I like that. <laughs> done. I, I think done? I'm done. Yeah. I brought it right here, didn't I? Look at that. Oh, it's in the corner. I actually put batteries in it, too. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get to work, but... There. Good morning, everyone. As you can see, Janice and Phil are taking the weekend off. Um, very much deserved uh, vacation that they're needing. A um, couple of things I'd like to, to uh, point out. The oneness blessing was before and it'll be after church.
So um, Will, William and Sandra will be doing that. Also, they brought fresh gala apples out front for anybody who wants them. Take, take as many as you need. Eggs are in the back. Again, there's quite a few. And you have a lot of egg cartons back there, girl. Oh, Empty. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Now we have a small table in the back in the kitchen. It's being used kind of like as a giveaway table. I would just like to ask that if you bring something in and put it on that table or near that table that you maybe put a note on it that this is a free to anybody who wants it. If you see that it's there a week, two weeks later, please take it. Um, there are some items that I had to, to throw out this morning that have been sitting there. We had no idea what they were, um, some kind of gel and plastic containers. No clue as to what it was. So I, I pitched him because we, you know, I can't, we, unsure of it. Not, not real safe. Anyway, so just a couple of housekeeping things. Also, we haven't mentioned it in a while, but Lynn Spicer is still collecting recipes to do a Divine Fellowship recipe book, and she needs much, much more. Um, you can email them to Frisky Nana at charter.net. Um, also, there's a basket back on the back table as you come in the door uh, for recipes. You can bring in printed ones if you'd like. But we really need to get, we, we need to start making that announcement. Yes. So, okay. yes. Do we put our name on it or anything like yes. that? Yes. So oh. We can confirm or phone number? Well, yeah, but just for acknowledgement, too, yeah. if you'd like. Uh, we would like to know, you know, whose okay. recipes were from whom. And yes, the most definitely. So, lots and lots of recipes are needed. And that goes for anybody out there on YouTube. You can submit them as well. So, be aware of that. I have had one gentleman send me one from okay, Florida. So Lynn was saying one gentleman has sent her one from Florida. So there we go. All over the world we get them. So anything else I'm missing, Daryl? I forgot to do Oh, I can do that real quick. You want, or you want to do it? I'm on. Okay, this week, 14th through the 20th, um, we got the, ch the Chagong was before service. That's every Sunday. Um, we have the Oneness Blessing after service. We have a guest speaker today and um, a guest meditation person as well. Um, emotion code tomorrow, 6.30. It starts at 6.30. Drum circle, please. That is like an amazing thing. Daryl does that. It is amazing if you love drumming. Uh, Wednesday is inner change with Sandra and William. Uh, let's see. Thursday the 18th is intuitive development with moi. Please come. It is so much fun. It is amazing some of the information that comes out in these intuitive readings. It's really a lot of fun. Helps to build your intuitive um, gift as well. So, And then uh, it looks like that's it. So, all right. I have one. Yes. Oh, no, it is there in the red. Yes, ARE meets at 630 as well on Thursday. Okay. Okay. I'm going to have another essential oil rollerball class, Woo! and I've got a sign-up sheet. <laughs> I said that. I, I have, they are they're a lot of fun. They really are, and um, we do some amazing recipes to help with various conditions. I have a flyer underneath the, the sign-up sheet that talks about some of the things that that we can make or do or whatever. So. It'll be from one to three, and the cost um, is $15 per item, but if you want to do three, I'll give you a 15% discount. So, I'll start it over here with Allie. <laughs> one more to get women on the floor, and it just goes. And goes. How many of you had a oneness blessing? How many of you are aware that there is a training that happens uh, in order to be a oneness blessing giver? How many of you wished you could go to India to do that? Oh. Well, there's something happening like that in Portland next month from September the 16th through the 18th. And it's live from India. And there are I don't know all the specific details of the difference between it and the oneness blessing except that it's an escalation of more 
Oneness blessing is like giving one on one. Mm -hmm. This is the golden orb of the of the consciousness of, of the, <coughs> whatever you want to call it out there. Um, training, and you will be a golden orb giver if you go through the training. If you want more information, let me know, and I'll direct you to a website that will give it to you. Okay. Oh, Darren. Yes. Can you just explain the oneness concept? Oneness concept. Thank you. I sit back over there and go, I wish they'd tell more about that. Um, and then I get up here and I don't tell more about it. <laughs> oneness blessing um, is an energy that was grounded by two people over in India called Bhagavan Haman. And that was their journey in this lifetime was to ground that energy of oneness on this planet. We are one. We are connected. And it's been an incredible extension all over the planet. There are millions of people who are oneness blessing givers. You used to have to go for 21 days back in the 80s when it started. Over, you had to go to India and it was 21 days and, in order to be an, a oneness blessing giver. And now it's down to two days. The energy has changed so much on this planet during this time period that the training is much shorter. Our, our readiness is much more intense. It is a transference of energy that is a quieting of the parietal lobes that gives your spirit an opportunity to speak to you, to calm you, to be open to the oneness energy messages of this planet of how do we live together, how do we, where do we go from here, and as we give the blessing, it's just passing through us. Hafiz had a saying, um, he was a Sufi mystic back in the 1400s, and said, I am the hole in the flute that the Christ breath flows through. I say, if I'm the hole in the flute, that the oneness blessing falls through, <laughs> that kind of thing. We get blessed as a giver, as we give the gift, as we give the blessing. It can be done one on one, and we all it do we, we place our hands on the top of your head for one minute ish. <laughs> it's all where I go, um, but we very seldom get any feedback about what happens. But when we do get feedback from people, it's like, really? Because we are totally unaware of what's going on within you. But it's, <laughs> some of the stories are phenomenal. So if you want more information, see me afterwards. OK, Daryl, you're on. Right. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. Well, I'm just going to jump right into it. So we have a guest speaker today. Um, and, well, let's just give it up for Josie Hoffman. Come on up. Hey. All right. Are you on? Am I on? You yeah. are on. You're hot. Yay. <laughs> what I always wanted to be, it's on. Oh. <laughs> just a minute before we do that. There's some, there's, I was told there's some zucchini and squash and stuff out in front of the street, so get it. Okay, cool. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> what I'd like to do is I'd really like to give thanks to Janice and Phil for all the time that they they actually give here. They've been doing this for 18 years. They hardly ever take time off. So if we could just be quiet for a few moments, send them really best wishes and have a good time in whatever they're doing for this very well-deserved time off. <laughs>
Prayers are powerful, aren't they? Mm-hmm. And Mary's not here today. Uh, Mary's in charge of the prayer warriors here at Divine Fellowship, and I believe there's over 50 of us that get emails um, that, that pray for people on a regular basis. So I want to talk about energy today and frequency and, and what we're doing with that. So when people come into this church for the first time, what's the most common thing that we hear? We're home. We're home. We're home. What else? I didn't know you were here. <coughs> That's a good one. I didn't know you were here. Feels good. Feels good. Like the energy. Like the energy. Okay. What's doing that? What's making that happen? Why do they get that feeling? Yes, All of us. All of us, exactly. It's not the angel paintings or the pictures or the cross with the dream catcher on it. That's not what's doing it, is it? It's us and the vibration that we're putting out okay, that has that feeling in so we want to see how far we can go with that today. <laughs> but we'll see where we get. So what are the ways that we send thoughts and feelings out? And are, are, do thoughts come from feelings or do feelings come from thoughts? Both. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was my answer too. <laughs> yes. Right, it's all energy. doesn't matter which, which it starts with, whether it starts with feelings or whether it starts with thoughts. But it's something we're all doing. And we're doing it with intention. <laughs> exactly, hopefully we're doing it with intention. What happens when we don't do it with intention? <laughs> I don't know if you heard that on the video, but that was oops. <laughs> I think there's a lot of oops, don't you? Yes. Mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of, I didn't mean for that to go out there. I'm hiding. <laughs> yeah, we think we're hiding it. Absolutely. <laughs> so what happens when we think things that we don't want? Like, um, I don't want to be late. What are we setting up? <laughs> yeah. We're setting up being late. Okay. If I'm looking for a parking place in the parking lot and I think it's it's too crowded, there's too many people here, is that thought going to find me a parking place? No. No, no. no. asking for one gets you a parking place. Works for Absolutely. And, and seeing one mm-hmm. in your mind that there's going to be a parking place in the area that you want to park in certainly is going to help us too. Mm-hmm. What about when we walk in a room and we see a friend across the way, but their backs to us? What do we do without even knowing we're doing it? Don't just start talking to them. No, not if their back is to you, you don't say hi. <laughs> but don't we focus on them and we want them to turn around and look at us, and what happens? Lo and behold, they do. Right. What is that? That's just a thought, energy. So we do these things automatically, don't we? <coughs> nobody, nobody really taught us to do that. We just do those things. And, and we take it as natural. But what we don't think about is what are the thoughts we're having at other times yeah. when we're not purposely thinking about these things. Mm-hmm. Where do our thoughts go then? And what are we doing with them? Sandra said, find someone else that's resonating the same thing. Well, not if I'm down in the dumps. I don't want somebody else that's down in the dumps. I want somebody that's going to uplift me and they help me feel better. They can't make me feel better, but they can certainly help, can't they? And so, yes, we want to find friends that are going to be uplifting. Um, so, talking about prayer, have you ever been uplifted by prayer? Okay, most of us have. Um, I want to tell you about my experience with my sister, who one of my sisters. I had four sisters and two brothers. 
but one of my sisters was dying, and she was in the hospital, and they called and said she wouldn't make it through the night. And so another sister and I were going to go relieve uh, her husband and another sister and stay with her to, through the night because they had been there all day. And I wasn't the normal one in my family. <laughs> I was the odd one out. Um, the things I did got really funny looks most of the time. They put up with me, but they really didn't know what the hell I was doing. You know, um, And for the most part, they didn't like it. This particular sister, Leona, she didn't like what I was doing at all. She thought it was evil. Um, but I wanted to do some energy work on her. She had cancer, she'd, been, she'd gone to chemo, she'd had a couple of radiation treatments and decided she wasn't going to have any more. And so my sister Marilyn and I that were going to go over, I said, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do this energy work on her. But the whole time we're doing that, I want you to think of her being free of pain. And, and that she's peaceful. That's what I want you to focus on. So once she went to sleep, because I knew she wouldn't like this. <laughs> when she went to sleep, it was about 2 o'clock in the morning. There we were, sweeping her body gently, you know. And I just went like this over her head, and she went, what are you doing? <laughs> and I'm kind of like, <laughs> What would you say? Great. <laughs> Great. I, I, I thought it was really clever because I said, oh, you were breathing funny, and I just leaned down to listen. Nice <laughs> 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 And she looked at my other sister, who at that time they put her hands down. <laughs> And so we waited until she went back to sleep again. <laughs> I think you've done this before. <laughs> or something similar. So then we did it again and everything. And in the morning, um, my sister Jean and, and her Leona's husband came over. And Marilyn and I went home expecting to get the call that she'd passed away. Well, we got a call about noon and said they're discharging her home. <laughs> She went home for six weeks and was basically pain-free oh, no. for that six weeks until the last day. Um, and, and had an absolutely beautiful death. So to me, that was truly an answer to prayer. Um, and I think that is very possible. So to me, our thoughts are so much more powerful than we ever give them credit for being. And that's what spoon bending is about for me to see what I can do. And when I look at that spoon, I think, okay, if that spoon can bend for me, what else am I capable of? And it's just a really good reminder for me not to put limits on myself. And for me, that's what spoon bending's about. So one of my favorite authors is this guy, David R. Hawkins, who was an MD, PhD, um, he gave um, seminars in Sedona for five or six years, and I was fortunate enough to go, I think, nine times in a year and a half. Uh, it was really great. Um, his book, Power Versus Force, uh, Truth Versus Fiction, I, I of the I, half a dozen more. Uh, Power Versus Force was the one I tried to go through first, and notice the word tried. <laughs> That book took me longer than any other book I ever read, other than The Course in Miracles, um, because I could only read a paragraph or a page at a time, because it was such a new concept for me when I was started reading him. He teaches spiritual non-duality. Now, we all know what those words mean individually, mm -hmm. <laughs> but what do they mean together? What does that really mean? So Sandra, you were talking about oneness. How many of us believe that there's just one of us here having many experiences? Most of us do in some way, to some degree. What he's teaching is there is only one. 
having those many experiences. And there is no duality. We were brought up believing that this is a world of duality. There's good, bad, there's up, down, there's back, forth, there's light, dark. What he's saying is, no, there is none of that. There is no duality. There's only good, and there's less and less good until it appears to be bad. There's only light until there's less and less light that it appears to be bad, or uh, dark. Does that feel different than good and bad, than light and dark? What do you think that does to our frequency, to our energy? When Janice does Followers of the Way, which she's going to do this fall, I highly encourage every one of you to go to that. She has a way of reading the Bible, looking at it, that you get that feeling, ah, oh, that's what that meant. It's really opened my eyes to many of the stories in the Bible. I was not a good Bible fan. The interpretations I was hearing, yeah. I got in too much trouble asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> Told I was a bad girl, you don't ask those questions. I didn't like that. It didn't set well with me. So Dr. Hawkins found that he could muscle test for levels for frequency to see where we are, and they came up, a group of them came up with this map of consciousness. And they found that based on the frequency we were carrying, and our frequency is our feelings and our thoughts, so based on the thoughts and feelings we're having of where we are on this chart. Now we're never at one of these levels. We fluctuate, but, but not from top to bottom we fluctuate within a range, okay? And you'll see at 200 is where the arrow in the middle changes direction. So anything that the arrow's going down is giving us negative feelings in some way, or not good feelings. And anything from 200 up is giving us a more positive, energetic feeling. And so he talks about the way we view God the way we view our life, what emotions we're carrying. And if you notice the colors, what order are they in? They're in the chakra order. And so, what do, what do we do in here in this life? What's our purpose for being here? Are we not trying to reach enlightenment in some form uh, to become more Jesus-like? Some Something like that? Is that not most of what we're trying to do? We can't do that if we haven't worked from the bottom up. So most of us want to start with our heart and just do spiritual stuff. It doesn't work if we haven't cleaned out the tribal and the base emotions that we have that we carry in the lower part of our body. Okay, so these emotions are what we carry in each of those chapters. Okay, so that there's designs of these colors. I have a DVD that takes about an hour where he talks about this in great detail. Um, and if you, I have a handout, or a sign-up sheet. If you would like to watch that DVD, I would be happy to bring it and let you watch it. He, this, to me, this is fascinating of what we do. You really begin to see where you are in that. There's uh, descriptions on the back that help you understand this chart. But watching that DVD, how many of you think you might be interested in it? Okay, then I will uh, talk to Sharon and Janice to see if we can do that next month, to watch the actual DVD on this. But what's so overwhelming is you see it in yourself. You see where you are. And we can do muscle testing too, and it, it's fun to play with that and see where we are. So let's go back to prayer for a minute, because what I wanted to show you this is that frequency we carry can be measured. It's not just a feeling, it's just not something airy fairy, it's measurable. So uh, my understanding is when Jesus did healings, Maybe I should ask you, how do you think Jesus healed? 
Energy. He visualized purity and wholeness. Touch with intention. He knew. With intention, with touch. And he knew. Okay. I don't know where I heard this, but it rang true for me. Is that if he saw people whole and perfect, he never focused on their illness what was wrong. It didn't matter what was wrong. It didn't even matter if they were dead or not. <laughs> Most of us would not try and do healing if they were dead. <laughs> or what we call dead, anyway. Because dead is not dead, is it? No. Just transition. <laughs> so if he didn't focus on what was wrong, the question is, should we? So when we are sending out prayers, what should we be doing? Sending out positive thoughts. Should we be seeing them as whole and perfect? Okay. Seeing the outcome already. Seeing the outcome. Okay. Those are all really good. But what is their plan? What is that individual's purpose and plan here? And about all the people that are surrounded not by them, but sur they're surrounded by. That's the way I want to say that. <laughs> I'd be pretty good if we could surround somebody just by ourselves. We could, though, energetically, couldn't we? Sure. Okay. So my prayer, when we have the prayer, or when I get an email from the prayer warriors, my prayer is always the same. It isn't for perfect health. It isn't that they truly be healed. It's that whatever is for their highest and best good. And that is my prayer for everyone. Because I don't know their plan. I don't know if in our terminology they're to be healed. Okay? But I'm going to see them in my mind whole and perfect. But my prayer is that whatever is best for their highest and best interest. And, and highest and best. I just lost that. Mm -hmm. Intention. <laughs> Their highest and best intention. Let that be what my prayer says today. Okay. Um, Mother Teresa was asked one time to march for an anti war march. <laughs> what do you think she said? No. 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 Why? Why would she say no? Because she said war is war no matter what you call it. Okay. She did say, though, that she would march for peace. But I will never march for war in any form. So what do we have today in our country? Okay. War on crime, war on cancer, war on drugs. And are we getting any closer to peace with them? Solution? No, we're getting farther away because we're at war with them. <laughs> More money, yes, okay. And going back to thoughts, Wayne Dyer used to say often, at least in his talks, he would say, thoughts are things. They're real. We can't see them. We feel them. And as a hypnotherapist, I can tell you the thoughts that you send out to other people, good or bad, they don't stay out there. They're boomerangs. And they boomerang back and they stay with us. So when we send out negative or bad feeling, that thought goes out, touches someone else, comes back, it sets with us. Yeah. And the more we send out negative thoughts to other people, the more our body begins to break down because all of the emotions sit in the same place in everybody. And Louise Hay's book, You Can Heal Your Life, is a wonderful, wonderful book that tells you what your thinking is doing to your physical body. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't got that book, put it in your library. So when we focus on the wrong thing, when we focus on 
what's wrong if I if I'm going to send a prayer for someone and they have a bad leg and I focus on that bad leg, mm. am I helping the leg? It depends what I'm doing. My focus, what what is that? Is that for a leg that's healed? But again, if Mother Teresa won't march her anti-war, how do we need to be looking at that leg? We need to be looking at it as whole and perfect. So this is a really fine line here to know what our thoughts are doing. Is that really sending a healing or are we adding fuel to the flame or to the fire? <coughs> Look to the fire. So we want to be clear in what thoughts we are sending, right? Because we could be increasing, because we already said that the energy here at the church, what everybody feels when they come here, is an accumulation of all of our thoughts. Okay. But what happens when we see the news? And we see the floods. Where do we go? I think it's really important to be aware of where our thoughts go. Do we first react to that? Oh my God, that's awful. That's just terrible. I mean, that's our natural thing to do. Isn't it? Oh my God, I mean, their family must be distraught. You know. Uh, so we need to catch that. To me, we need to catch that right away. And don't do that because we're adding to the problem when we do that. Okay. What happened in our country after 9 11? Everybody went to church. Everybody went to church? Anger. Depression. Some got depressed, but didn't we become more united? Yes. Didn't neighbors come out and meet neighbors? Weren't people more helpful? More caring? Okay. What happens after forest fires a lot of times? The forest needs to regenerate itself, and a fire is one way to do that. Um, see, I had another example here. Somewhere. Okay, well, I should quit reading this because I'm really lost at this point. <laughs> 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 um, oh, Mount St. Helens. That's the one. All the news we heard about Mount St. Helens, was any of it good? No. It was going to devastate the countryside, the crops were going to be terrible, and what happened? The crops were more. Um, Productive than ever in years and years and years. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the way we look at things, we don't know what the plan is. Just like those situations look really bad, look desperate, look terrible. But in the end, there were some good things that happened. Okay. So can we bring ourselves to look for something good in what appears to be bad. That's really the Could we go when we hear about a shooting? That one takes us all down pretty fast. I mean, did you just feel the room? This one. <laughs> just for me to mention that. So what we want to do is begin to catch our thoughts. And the moment we catch that feeling of going down, we're going to say, no, there's something in this. There's a lesson here for some people. Yes, it's tragic. But there's something going to come out of this. What are we seeing between races right now and the police and the people they're supposed to be protecting? But we also have to remember that our news is focused on what's not good. There are millions and millions of stories of what's good. We just don't see them on the news. So what I think we need to do, and what I attempt to do, and I'm, 
I don't know about you, but I'm not always successful. But I catch myself the moment I can and try to reverse that. Try to see something good. So instead of war, we could have peace. Right? Instead, instead of anger, we could send out love. Love to everybody. To love the people that died. Love to the families that are in sorrow. Uh, and love to the perpetrator. Because all that happened was that person was really, really hurting. There was no love and compassion in that person's life. So that soul needs our love and attention. So are we strong enough to send love to that person? Even though what they've done, we consider a crime. And even though it looks bad. Are we strong enough to do that? Wow, this I didn't really know about. <laughs> Why I wanted to talk about this today is because I think we have the ability to change our world. And the more of us that begin to add to a situation instead of add fuel to the fire, if we can become aware enough to turn these stories around in our mind, to send out love. It's easy to send out love uh, when we're receiving that back. It's not always easy to send that out when we're not receiving it back. But this group of people is very special, and we know that by who walks through our door and tells us the comfort that they feel. Do you remember the stories that came out of New Orleans? Mm -hmm. yes. All the individuals mm -hmm. that on their own went to New Orleans to help? Weren't those amazing stories? Mm -hmm. Not only to rescue people, but animals? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I, I think I have four steps here somewhere. <laughs> Okay. Well, I had four steps. Okay, so let's just make up our own. How's that? <laughs> so what would step one be? Right, stop. Think about what we're doing. Don't, don't just let our feelings just... <laughs> one, stop and think what we're doing. What's the next step? Connect to our heart space. Connect to our heart space? Yes. Okay. Change your perception. Change our per perception. Exactly. Can yeah. Cancel the negative. If we're, if we're reacting to something negatively, you go, okay, cancel that. Stop that. Mm -hmm. We could do that. Mm -hmm. But turning it around quickly would do that too. Okay. Finding the opposite of that feeling. So just like we talked about war, the opposite of war is peace. The opposite of uh, uh, crime is compassion and love. Right? So finding a way to turn whatever we're looking at around and send that and focus on that. Right now, we're all feeling some really good things because we're looking at the Olympics and our USA uh, teams are doing really good. You know, we're, we're getting lots of gold out there. <laughs> <laughs> so what's something today that we could, as a group, focus on? Something that needs our love and our energy. Washington, oh, D.C. <laughs> Our politicians. Okay. So can we spend a few minutes thinking of some way? <laughs> No, it won't. No. 
Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> 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 So what is it we want from a politician? Honesty. Integrity. Honesty, integrity? No, we want a politician to do what we want. Yeah. Yes, right. I don't care how honest they are or integrity. Well, I want them to be honest. But sometimes that doesn't matter. Yeah, okay. But we want them to follow the will of the people. That's what we want, we want, right? So can this group right now send out prayers that whoever is elected will follow the will of the people? Amen. But we all know that we want a peaceful country. How, right. how about that? Yeah. Yeah. We want a country of peace and compassion. Yeah. About That's the highest and best good of our country. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Not just our country, but everybody else in the world. Yeah. Okay, so we're all going to focus on the highest and best good for our country and all the people in it. All the people, every person in it. Okay, so let's just spend a couple minutes doing that, sending that energy out. Feel the difference in this room. 